Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,367. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,367, or you want to download the Power BI desktop start file, Power BI Excel Magic Trick 1367 DAX calendar table, so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have another Power BI desktop video here. We're going to see how to use the DAX calendar function to create a calendar table. Now, actually, this is 1367. In our last video, 1366, we manually created a calendar table in Excel. But we want to see how to create a dynamic calendar table using DAX that will automatically adjust. Here's our fact table, our sales table, and we have a range of dates. But we want our calendar table to totally update. If we add new dates to the bottom from the year year 2017, we want our calendar table to update. Now, this trick is going to come from a comment below 1366. Brian XYZ at YouTube posted a comment about the amazing calendar function. It is awesome to hang out on our online Excel team. Now, we're going to get to see these DAX functions over in Power BI Desktop, calendar, end of the month, date, year. We'll even see this new field name.convention where we'll be able to say table name, field name in square brackets, dot, and we could say month to get the month name, year to get the year, and a bunch of other options. And we'll also see the min and max function. All right, let's go over to Power BI Desktop. I'm in table view, and I'm looking at our table. We've imported this. Now, notice that this particular data set, the serial number date column is called month, and it's all the end of each one of the months. But no problem. Whatever set of serial number dates are in our date column in the fact table, we can use a DAX formula to create a calendar table, which requires all of the dates with none missing. That means that our calendar table will have to start at January 31st, go all the way down to May 29th with all of the dates in between. It would start at January 31st, February 1st, February 2nd, all the way in perfect sequential order with none left out to the very last date. Now, we could go over and look relationship view. There's our table. We definitely need our date table and then build the relationship. Let's come back over to table view. Let's go look at the modeling tab here. And guess what? The last few videos, we've been creating DAX calculated columns and DAX measures. But look at that button. There's a new table button. And that's what we're going to use. I'm going to click New Table. And now we can create the formula to create the calendar table. Now, the first part is going to be the name of the table. So D calendar space, equal sign, space, and we get to use the calendar function. Now look at this. This function returns a table with one column of all dates between start date and end date. That's cool. It'll totally create all the dates for us. I'm going to hit Tab, Start Date, End Date. We want to dynamically get whatever the smallest and biggest dates are from the fact table. So we'll use the min function on that month column, which is our serial numbers, and then the max. All right, I'm going to use min f sales to get to our table, and then down arrow in square brackets our field name month. That's our serial number dates. Tab, close parentheses. Now I type comma and an end date max. F sales down to our serial number date column tab, close parentheses. Now we have our end date, close parentheses. And watch this. When I hit Enter on this DAX formula, boom, there it is. All of the dates from whichever the smallest one is, including all the dates in between, all the way down to, I think our last date is 529. But look at this over here. Here's our table. And if I click on the table, we can see the formula right there. If I expand the list and show the field, I can click on the field. Now I'm actually going to change the data type here. So up in modeling, the data type will be date. 
And there's some formatting. I want to format it maybe as this one right here. Now, that would work because we have min all the way to the max, and it's dynamic. But what if you wanted to create all of the dates from whatever the min date was? And imagine if it was in the middle of the month. What if we wanted to always push this back to the first day of this month and that last date, the max date, to the end of the month? Now, I'm actually going to create that, keep that table there as a record and create a new table. And I'm going to create a second table and look at a second option. I called it dcalendar02. Now we're going to use the same calendar function and the same min, f sales on the month, comma, and the same max, f sales on the month, close parentheses. But I need to push whatever this min date happens to be, whether it's the first, the middle, or the end of the month, I need to push it to the first day of the month. I'm going to use the end of month function. Now, if you know how to use end of month in Excel, it's the same over here. We have some start date and then comma. Months tells us how many months to jump forward and give us the end of the month or backwards. Or if we put a 0, it would give us the end of this particular month. For the first month, I need to jump back one month. So I'm going to put minus 1. That would jump back to December 31st in our case. Any date in, in January would give us December 31st. So close parentheses, then I simply add 1. Now, interestingly enough, Excel and DAX can take a date and add a 1. Now, think about that. Over in Power Query, or most databases, date would be data type date. And a number would be some sort of number data type. Maybe in our case, it would be integer. So Power Query, we'd have to convert both of them to dates. But over here in DAX, it works just like it does in Excel. All right, now for the max, we still are going to use the end of the month. Just in case the max date is anywhere from the first to the end, comma, our number of months to jump is always going to be 0. Close parentheses, and then Enter. And look at that. Now we get 1, 1, all the way to 131. And then same with the last date. I'm going to select that column, date type, date, and then format, something like that. Now there's one other possibility, too. What if our first date in the data set was in February, and our last date was in September, but we wanted our date table to span the entire year? Let's do yet another table. I'll call it D calendar 03 equal sign, and we'll use the same basic construction we had before. All right, so I have the calendar and the min and max. But that min, if it was in February, I really need 1, 1, whatever the year is. So I'm going to use the date function. Now, the date function is the same as in over in Excel also. So the important part for us will be getting the year from the min. So I'll use the year. And the year function works the same as it does in Excel also. Close parentheses on year. So if we're trying to get the beginning of the year, comma, then the month, of course, is 1, comma, and the day is 1. So we're using the date function in our start date to always jump back to January 1st or whatever the current year is. Similarly, for the max, we say date, and then whatever the year is of the max, comma, and luckily, the years always end on 1231. So the month is 12, comma, and the day is 31. Close parentheses and Enter. So now click data type, date, format, something like that one. And there it is, 1, 1, 2016. And we go all the way to 1231. We can see that created a calendar table for the entire year. Now, we have three tables over here, right? But for any of those tables you choose, we now need to create some helper columns for month name, month number, year, and so on. Now, actually, we could have, if we came over to our calendar three table, so you actually can use the Add Columns and actually build your formulas and data types right into the formula. 
but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my user interface. New column. Now, the first one I'm going to do is year. And I'm going to do it the not dot convention. The dot convention is a new feature here. I'm going to do it the way we've always done it for decades back in Excel. I'm going to use the year function. The date, that's from the D calendar table. And I'm in calendar 3, down arrow to get the date close parentheses, and Enter. And sure enough, it will give us the year all the way down. New column, and let's look at the new convention. I'll call this year 2, equal sign. And watch this. We actually type the table name and the field name for our date column. That's the column in the calendar table with our sequential dates. And look at that. Once I put table name and in square brackets date, it gives me these options. I'm going to down arrow to dot year. So the dot convention, we're going to get year from within the date. When I hit Enter, same thing. Now if I look at year, that's the old way we did it. And then the dot convention, you know, in this case, either one would be fine. I would almost tend to think that's faster and easier. But let's look at two more examples. And when we get to the name of the month, then maybe the dot convention looks a little bit easier. Now, I do need month number. So I'm going to create a new column, call this month. And I'm going to try the new convention, DC, down arrow to date. And then look at that, dot. And I'm going to use dot month number. Month would actually give us the full month name, tab. And now when I hit Enter, there's the month number. Now let's say that we want the full month name, January, February, March. Well, let's do it the old way. New column, we'll call this month space equal sign. And over in Excel, we would use the text function. But that doesn't exist over here. It's called format. Now once we get to format, we finally figure out that format is the function to use. It works just like text. We give it the date. DC down arrow to date, comma, and format. You have to know custom number formatting. In double quotes, the custom number formatting for full month name is four M's. In double quote, close parentheses, and enter. Now, I look at it. I made this mistake here. I'm going to put month name here. I should have put month number there. That's what I usually do. I forgot. In fact, I'll go fix that. Month name. I'm going to come back over here, double click, call it number. Now, one thing that's interesting, we'll see just in a moment, um, the new dot convention might be a little bit easier. But I didn't see dot convention if you wanted the abbreviation. So 3Ms, if I change that up there, gives us the three letter abbreviation. I'm going to change this to 4Ms and Enter. Now let's add a new column. And we're going to call this month name 02 equal sign DC. We'll down arrow to get our date column tab. And there's our drop down. And we want dot month tab. When I hit Enter, that gives me the full month name. Now if we compare and contrast, here we use the old method. And we had to know that format was the function and the custom number formatting. But certainly this one seems a bit easier. We just have date. The dot convention says, hey, we need something from that date. Here we want the month name. All right, so we created, as we see over here, one, two, three different calendar tables. This is the one we're going to use. Let's go over to relationships. Now, in order to create calculations, like on revenue based on the month name, we have to have a relationship. This date column has a sequential, unique list of dates from the min to the max. In our case, we went from the beginning of the year to the end. I'm going to drag this unique identifier, primary key, this is the one side, over to the many side. Month, that's the column with our sequential dates. There's the one to many relationship. Now let's go to Report View, and we're going to have an error. And I'm going to go over to Calendar 3 and just check month name. And sure enough, it's sorted alphabetically. No problem. We go back over to our table. 
And of course, we need to tell this column to sort not alphabetically, but in accordance with month number 1 to 12. With month name selected, there's our sort by columns. I select the drop down, and I want to say month number is how month name should be sorted. And I'm going to do this for both of the columns down to month number. Of course, we would never have both of these columns in a calendar table. We did it just to compare and contrast. And there, now that we have sorted, we see January to December. Now I want to control S, and we want to test this. We want to go back to our source data. Here's our Excel file. And this was sort of a, a funny data set to do this with, because we had end of the month. But let's just test this. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to add some random date in 2015. So I added 5 slash 5 slash 2015, type a B tab to get Bellin, 165,000 tab. And our zip code was 94618. That's in California, Oakland. Control S. Now our data source has been updated, and we want to see this magic. Let's come over to the table view. Now we can come over to home. And there's our refresh. It's refreshing. And check that out. Our calendar table with one date in 2015 went from 1-1-2015 1, 1, all the way down to, there it is, 12-31-2015. Each one of the other calendar tables, if we come over to our first calendar table and look at the date, it better actually have just first date and then a sequential to the end. That's correct. If we go to our D calendar 2, this one we pushed back using end of the month, pushed back to the very first of the month. And then, of course, our table here, we had a date column spanning the entire year. All right, that was a little fun with calendar tables. And notice we have calendar 3, so we can see the calendar function and the various internal function we use to create our calendar table. And then we compared and contrast year and this new dot convention, format function, and the related dot convention. All right, that was a lot of fun with calendar tables using DAX. Thanks to Brian XYZ at YouTube. We'll see you next video.